The Gospel is written in the 8th chapter of St. Luke, beginning at the 4th verse. When much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spake by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away, because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And other fell on good ground, and sprang up, and bare fruit an hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And his disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear it. Then cometh the devil, and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. And that which fell among thorns are they which, when they have heard, go forth, and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to perfection. Be that on the good ground are they which, in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it, and bring forth fruit with patience. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to the judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And you may be seated. Just a few announcements today. Uh, first, uh, today is the day of the parish meeting at 12 noon after the second mass, so if you're able to come back for that, please do. If you're not able to be here uh, and have not filled out a uh, signed a, a proxy uh, sheet, please do so, so uh, you can assign your vote to someone who will be here and they can vote on your behalf. Uh, but we do hope you'll be able to be here. Also, uh, there are two cards out on the uh, table on the patio. One is for Father Hines and for his family and the loss of his father, uh, William Hines. And the other is for Judith, who is going to be honored today at the 1030 Mass for her service to as choir secretary for, I think, about 11 years. She's been serving very faithfully. 
So that's very well deserved. Um, the visitation ministry, this is another uh, new uh, thing that is starting up. Father Hines would like to have people volunteer uh, for visitation. The people who are homebound, if they're ill, uh, just or to deliver some food, whatever it may be. If there's any way you think you could help with the visitation ministry, you can always uh, email him, ask him any questions, and sign up for, for that if you wish. And the Good News Club, uh, teaching the Bible to school children at Eisenberg Elementary, started on uh, Friday uh, afternoon, and apparently was a very big success. They have 28 children come to the first meeting of the Good News Club. So that bodes well to be a, a blessing to them and to this church. Uh, there is, uh, the, the uh, bulletin says there's no Bible study today, but there is one uh, right after this Mass, before the next Mass. And I think everything else is pretty self-explanatory. Today is also the first Sunday of the month, so we have uh, birthdays and anniversaries. So is there anyone here this morning that has a birthday in February? No. Anyone here that has an anniversary in February? No. Okay. <laughs> However, um, our dear friend Paulette Fitzgerald, who comes to the 8 o'clock Mass, tomorrow is her birthday. And she just got back from her long trip to India, and she's recovering today from uh, the time change and all of that. So uh, she asked if we could bless her birthday today, so we'll do that in absentia. So, if you'll just turn to page 597 in the Book of Common Prayer. And we'll uh, say this prayer for Paulette. Watch over thy child, O Lord, as her age increase. Bless and guide her wherever she may be, keeping her unspotted from the world, Strengthen her when she stands, comfort her when she is sorry or sorrowful, raise her up when she falls, and in her heart may thy peace which passes understanding abide all the days of her life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So happy birthday to Paulette. Okay, and now if you'll stand for the hymn.
us, Father. Amen. Normally, I would be giving this homily on the Gospel reading, but this Gospel consists of one of only two parables in which Jesus actually explained the meaning. Since he did such a good job, and because I'm not in the same league with our Lord and Savior, I'm not even going to try. <laughs> Therefore, I'm going to talk to you about our epistle reading today from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. But first, as a public service, I'd like to give you a few examples of how you can tell when it's going to be a rotten day. It's going to be a rotten day if you turn on the news and they're showing emergency routes out of the city. <laughs> it's going to be a rotten day if you call suicide prevention and they put you on hold. <laughs> it's going to be a rotten day if your birthday cake collapses from the weight of the candles. <laughs> and it's going to be a rotten day if your twin sister forgot your birthday. <laughs> it's going to be a rotten day if your boss tells you not to bother to take off your coat. Oh. And finally, it's going to be a rotten day if your car horn goes off accidentally and remains stuck as you follow a group of Hell's Angels down the freeway. <laughs> so I hope you'll forgive this lighthearted introduction to a very serious topic. The Apostle Paul gives us an example of how we can overcome anything through the power of God, not only as bearers of the good news, but also in our everyday lives. Even in this small church, it's amazing how many of us have endured or are enduring many difficult and trials and traumas in our lives, whether they be as the result of difficult childhoods, disastrous relationships, dangerous situations, physical challenges, or the pain of loss. In our epistle reading today from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, we have a brief but powerful autobiographical excerpt from his life. To refer to this reflection of his as impressive is somewhat paradoxical, because in it he is obsessed with how unimpressive he is. What he's actually saying is that the only truly impressive thing, impressive thing about him is his weakness. Here's what he says as paraphrased in the Message Bible. He said, I've worked much harder, been jailed more often, beaten up more times than I can count, and at death's door at time after time. I've been flogged five times with the Jews' 39 lashes, beaten by Roman rods three times, pummeled with rocks once. I've been shipwrecked three times, and immersed in the open sea for a night and a day. In hard traveling year in and year out, I've had to ford rivers, fend off robbers, struggle with friends, struggle with foes. I've been at risk in the city, at risk in the country, endangered by desert sun and sea storm, and betrayed by those I've fought for my brothers. I've known drudgery and hard labor, Many a long and lonely night without sleep. Many a missed meal, blasted by the cold, naked to the weather. And that's not the half of it. When you throw in the daily pressures and anxieties of all the churches, when someone gets to the end of his rope, I feel the desperation in my bones. When someone is duped into sin, an angry fire burns in my gut. I have to brag about myself, and if I have to do so, I'll brag about the humiliations that make me like Jesus. So Paul is not apologizing for his weakness, but rather he boasts about it, as precisely the qualification which validates his claim to be an apostle 
of Christ. He lists his sufferings not as heroic ordeals, but as evidence of how his ministry was marked by the physical and psychological frailty of an ordinary human being. Paul's experiences certainly meet the criteria of trauma, yet it did not seem to deter him in his ministry. His travel to unsafe places and the writing of encouraging letters to churches and to individuals in whom he had invested his life, even to the point of risking it. So how did he even function? The reality is that he was not a superhuman, constantly smiling and never complaining, yet he still found joy. Paul was one of those people who endured trauma by having the courage to be more challenged and more determined to help others grow in their faith, as he did, by depending more on God. He encountered his own weakness, but showed resilience, bouncing back from where he was in conflict and in fear. He found comfort through friends and strength in his relationship with Jesus. Paul recognized the reality of earthly struggles and the toll they take on our bodies. But he sees them from a different perspective, from an eternal one. Our time on this earth is minuscule when compared to eternity. Likewise, our troubles in this sinful world pale in comparison to a promise of permanent participation in the presence of God. Most of us have faced or will face some form of trauma or loss in this life. So how do we become people like Paul with his high capacity to deal with it? His resilience is evident and his perspective is inspiring. The fundamental factor is relationships. Our relationship with Jesus is extremely important. He invites, invites us to abide with him, not just visit him on a Sunday morning. When Paul went through a period of ongoing torment, rather than erasing the difficulty, God promised that his grace is sufficient and his power is made perfect in weakness. Even when our struggles are ongoing, we can find strength in Jesus. Our relationships with others are also very critical. Paul had people around him, like Timothy, Barnabas, and Titus, who were consistent sources of support. He found encouragement from various people in the churches he had planted. Just read the greetings at the end of his letters. He also recognized his own role as a source of comfort to others who faced suffering not by minimizing their suffering, but by sharing it with them, just as Jesus has shared his suffering and comfort with us. We're not called to stoically endure hardship by ourselves. We are called to carry each other's burdens. And we can take heart from Paul's words. Earlier in chapter 4, Paul said, We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. In order for us to deal with our failures or our traumas, God's ultimate agenda for our lives is paramount. Paul used his suffering to demonstrate that the power of God can work through human weakness. Our suffering or our failure can be for his glory, in spite of the weakness of our humanity. Serving God, even in the tough times of failure, authenticate what we really believe. So when you fall, fall forward. Keep perspective. God doesn't waste our failures, but he uses them to even accomplish a greater good. And I'd like to leave you with uh, this poem by Douglas Maylock, and it's called Good Timber. 
The tree that never had to fight for sun and sky and air and light, that stood out in the open plain and always got its share of rain, never became a forest king, but lived and died a scrubby thing. The man who never had to toil to heaven from the common soil, who never had to win his share of sun and sky and light and air, never became a manly man, but lived and died as he began. Good timber does not grow in ease. The stronger wind, the tougher trees. The farther sky, the greater length. The more the storm, the more the strength. By sun and cold, by rain and snows, in tree or man, good timber grows. Where thickest stands the forest growth, we find the patriarchs of them both. And they hold converse with the stars, whose broken branches show the scars of many winds and of much strife. This is the common law of life. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And now while we have time, let us do good unto all men, and especially unto them that are of the household of faith.
today is offered for the glory of God, and please pray for all those people on our church prayer list, especially we pray for the repose of the soul of William Hines, the father of Father Gordon Hines, for our dear friend Phil Colson, we pray for his soul, and we pray for his wife Ellen who, and her family who is going through a very difficult time. We pray for uh, Jenny Hope, who will be having surgery tomorrow. We pray for Father Hines, who will be having some medical tests done tomorrow, some yearly uh, exams. Uh, we pray for Anne uh, Whitfield and for her husband Jim uh, at this very difficult time, for Laura Pastrick, who is recovering from surgery, uh, for Rebecca Andrews, uh, and for Kathy McKeague, we're thankful for her. Uh, she's doing so well following the shoulder surgery. So uh, uh, we also pray for, um, I don't think I've forgotten anyone, but we pray for the uh, all the members of our church family, and we pray for all the ministers of this church. And now let us pray for the entire church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, Blair, our Archbishop, Donald and Peter, our bishops, Gordon, our priest, Marty, our deacon, and Abel, our postulant, who is currently serving overseas, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who, in this transitory life, are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. William Hines, Phil Colson. Beseeching thee, to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, 
provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who, with hearty repentance and true faith, turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul said. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. We is Jesus Christ so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places, give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for the thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, 
Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy, through our manifold sins, to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And that was our Savior hath taught us, we are bold to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. With my spirit. Lamb of God that takest away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God that takest away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God that takest away the sin of the world. Grant us thy peace. And we do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that takest away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but seek for thy own, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but seek the word only, 
and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed.
Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Depart in peace. Thanks be to God. The peace of God which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.